Good morning, everyone, and welcome to church. It's great to see your smiling faces here in the building. I think we should stand to our feet and start in prayer this morning. We'll wait for everybody else to filter in, drop their kids to Kids Church. And good morning to everyone who's joining us online as well this morning. It's great to see you. Why don't you engage with us in the comments? Let us know where you're watching from. We'd love to know where you're joining from this morning. And of course, all those people who are home unwell today, uh, we send you all our love and our prayers and we hope to see you back next week fighting fit and 100%. But why don't we just pray now? Our God is a good God. He is worthy of our praise. And Lord, we just want to come into your presence this morning and we want to lift you high, Jesus. Lord, we want to magnify you this morning. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. There is no one that compares with you, Jesus. And it is our privilege. It is our joy. It is our honour to come into your presence this morning and worship you, Jesus. We're here to worship you, Jesus. We're here to meet with you this morning, Jesus. Oh, we love you, Jesus. We magnify you, Lord. Lord, we pray today as we lift our praise before you, Lord, that you would be exalted in our midst, you would be honoured in our midst. We thank you that your word says that you inhabit the praises of your people. So we know this morning that you are here. We know Holy Spirit is moving in our midst this morning and our heart's desire is that you, Holy Spirit, would have your way today. We pray that people would receive healing in their bodies today, healing in their minds today, a a fresh touch from heaven today, an outpouring of your spirit today. We know that you are good. Jesus, your word says that your hand is not short, that you can't bless us, you can't reach us, you can't give us what we need. And we thank you, Jesus, that you know our every need. But Father, we just want to worship you now. God, we want to pour our hearts out in worship this morning. Church, why don't we lift our hands this morning as an act of saying, Jesus, I'm here. I want to meet with you this morning. Lord, whatever it is that you want to pour back into me this morning, I want to accept it. Today, I want to reach out to heaven. I want to honour the King. And we want to lift you high, Jesus, because you alone are worthy of our praise. Hey, church, He is worthy of our praise. Come on, let's worship this morning. Let's worship the King. He is worthy. He is worthy. He is worthy. Come on, let's bless Him this morning. Isn't our God great this morning? Let's worship Him. Turn into wine, open the eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. Awesome in power 
God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God. Our God's greater church. We lift him on high this morning. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then what can stand against? declare it this morning church our God's greater our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any other our God is healer awesome in power our God our God our God our God is greater our God is stronger God you are higher than any Awesome in power, our God, our God. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Then what can stand against? Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, awesome in power. Our God, our God, our God. God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer, awesome in power, our God, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, God you are higher than any other, our God is healer. Awesome in power, our God, our God. We praise you this morning. We lift your name on high, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. You are the lion and the lamb, Lord God. And you are coming. You are coming on a cloud. We glorify you this morning, God. Oh, your holy Lord. He's coming on the clouds. Kings and kingdoms will bow down. Yeah, we bow before you, Lord. And every chain will break as broken hearts declare.
It's Isaiah 61, verse 3 to 10. And and the small portion we'll read this morning says, To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, and the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that He might be glorified. And maybe you were reading that this morning and you're like, well, what is the spirit of heaviness? I would say a lot of people are carrying a spirit of heaviness. And this is what it is. A biblical definition of a spirit of heaviness is a feeling of being dull, old, despondent, serious, and weighted down mentally. Who would say, you don't have to raise your hand, it's totally fine. But who would say that either today or yesterday or sometime this week, you've battled with the spirit of heaviness? But the good thing is this morning, the Bible actually says to us that the oil of gladness can actually overcome that. And what we can do, the oil of gladness is for us. It's for us to appropriate in our life to come. And the only way that I know how to get a fresh dose of the oil of gladness is actually in worship and to say, Jesus, here I am. You know, why don't we close our eyes this morning because we're singing about Jehovah Jireh. God, our provider, the one who supplies all our needs. And this song we're singing this morning says that He is the Lion of Judah. You know, the Bible actually talks to us about who the Lion of Judah is and and what that means, what that person of Jesus is to be the Lion of Judah. And so many people seem to take their eyes off the Lion of Judah and they see the other one. Because the Bible says to us that our enemy, Satan, roams around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so sometimes we're too busy trying to, trying to find the one that's roaming. See, is he, is he coming after me? Is he already here? Is, is Satan chasing me down? But what we have to do is turn our eyes upon Jesus this morning and say, Jesus, I'm coming to you this morning. I feel like I've got a heavy heart. I don't feel like I have joy. I feel depressed. I feel despondent. I feel dull. But Jesus, I know that you can pour out the oil of gladness. And so what we're going to do again this morning is we're going to lift up our God. And we're going to say, Jesus, I thank You that you are, you are the Lion of Judah. You are the Lion of Judah. You are here, Jesus. Come on, let's sing again this morning. He is the Lion of Judah. And if you've been feeling dull or despondent or downcast or depressed or any other word that starts with D that's not from heaven, why don't you lift your hands to heaven and say, Jesus, I need the oil of gladness because I feel low. I feel sad. I don't feel like I should. But Jesus, I need a fresh touch from you this morning. Come on, let's sing this morning. Let's lift Him high this morning. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Our God. Our God is the lion. He's the lion the of Judah, church. Of Judah. Come on, lift your he's voice this morning. He's roaring with and power. And he's fighting battle. your battles. Every knee will yes, bow every knee will bow. Our God is the lamb, the lamb that was slain for the sin. His blood breaks the chains And every knee will bow before the Lion and the Lamb Every knee will bow before 
who can stop the Lord Almighty? 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 No one. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord The Lion of Judah, he's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him. Our God, our God is the Lamb, the Lamb that was slain for the sin of the world. His blood breaks the chains and every knee will bow. The lion and the lamb, every knee will bow before him. Our God, our God is the lion, the lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before him.
there's just such a beautiful presence in the building today and if you can feel this beautiful atmosphere as we sing about our beautiful Jesus you know the one who went to the cross and he saved us and we pour our hearts out to him this morning I just know that I know that I know that he pours back into us this morning he knows our every need church You know, the Bible says in James, if we draw near to Him, He draws near to us. And when you worship with your arms raised high and you say, here I am, Jesus, I'm here to bless you. I'm here to honour you. I'm here to worship you. It's just like this thing that just happens. He just pours right back out into you. That's why worship is so powerful. Worship is so important. As believers, for us, it it helps us work out who we are. It helps us remember that He is the King. It helps us to realize that we're the child of the Most High God, that we are actually royalty. It kind of gives you a bit of a reality check into who you are. 
So that when you come out of worship, you think, man, I feel like a new person. I'm like a new creation. And we shine. There's a radiance on your face. People can tell when you've been in worship. People can tell when you've been spending time with the King. It would just see it on you. And I don't know about you, there's times that I just think, man, I could just stand here worshipping all day. I could just worship and worship and worship. But God, we thank you this morning that your beautiful Holy Spirit is in this place, ministering to people, answering prayers, pouring out love, joy, peace, all the things we need this morning, Jesus. We honour you this morning. We honour you this morning, God. Oh, we give thanks, Jesus. Hey, church, who likes worship? Who likes worshipping? Who doesn't like it when worship stops? Who would rather worship just keeps going? Hey, there'll come a day where you'll be able to worship 24-7 when we get to heaven. But you can be seated. And uh, welcome to church this morning. It's great to see your beautiful faces. Why don't you turn to your neighbour and say, you are very good looking. It's you, You can... Les, did you t- Leif, did you tell Les he's good looking? They say, good looking, Les. <laughs> tell them they're singing good this morning. And uh, we do have some visitors with us this morning, church. Can we put our hands together and welcome our visitors? It's great to have you in church this morning. Wherever you're from, we pray you enjoy your time with us today and stick around for a tea and coffee after the service as well. We do have some uh, cool people making coffee today. It's Dion and who's the other one? Oh, it's just Dion. Well, we have a cool person making coffee today. So make sure you go and get a coffee after the service today. We just have a couple of announcements. Um, For those of you that don't know, my name is Lisa, and it's my privilege to be the senior leader at the church here. And I'm just going to share a couple of announcements while Reynard gets ready for communion. If you're new here, this is what's called a QR code. They're very fancy. You can just scan it with your phone, and your phone will automatically tell you everything about our church. That is something. So make sure you check that out. Uh, If you're part of our church family and you want to update your details, you can use this one. Or if you're visiting today, please give us your details if you would like and we can follow you up as well. Technology is amazing. Um, What else do we have, Sean? Oh, this is going to be good. Who remembers Pastor Aaron Puddle? He was with us in 2015. That was eight years ago, if you don't realise that. That was before Josh was born. That's a little bit scary. Um, He was also with us. What's that? Yes, he also came in 2018 and then, uh, what's now, 2023. So he's coming back five years later, but this time it's not just Pastor Aaron. He's bringing his wife, Callista, and four other people from his ministry team in Sydney. So we're going to have a weekend of six incredible musicians who are here with us. And just so you know, worship on the Sunday is going to be led by Pastor Aaron and his team. So they don't have a sound guy, sorry, James, or a computer guy, sorry, lads, but they do have the people up the front here. So they're going to lead worship for us on the Sunday morning, and then Pastor Aaron will preach, obviously. But on the Saturday night, we will have afternoon and evening, a special opportunity for all of our worship and creative arts team to get together with Pastor Aaron and Callista and the other four people, and they just want to sow into our worship team. And they just want to bless you. So if you're part of our musicians, singers, creative people, technical people, people, anything like that. Keep your ear out for information. That'll be a special event just for you. And they're really looking forward to spending time with you. On the Sunday, our children will be with us in here for praise and worship. So it's going to be a really nice time as our kids get to be in here, hear them worship, um, do a bit of teaching on worship as well. Pastor Aaron loves kids. He just loves little people. And he's just so looking forward to being with us in, I guess that's two weeks time, is it? I hope so. When I rang him on Friday, I said, looking forward to seeing you next weekend. And he said, well, I won't be there, but I hope whoever's preaching is good. Oh, no, it's two weeks time, so that's going to be great. What's up next, Sean? Our prayer meeting tomorrow night. That's awesome. 7.30 p.m. Uh, we hope that you'll join us. It's a great time of getting together, praying for the church, praying for world events, praying for whatever, as the Spirit leads us. Mission Sunday. So next Sunday... Uh, This is something for all the people who like buying glass and bringing it for the food pantry. We can't give glass to the food pantry. It's just a thing. It's a safety issue. But next Sunday, you can bring glass because we're taking up a special food collection for the Good Feed in Donald. So the Good Feed is averaging more than 60 people on a Monday night that they're feeding. And the one thing that they've really requested would be super helpful in this season. They have rice coming out their ears. What they don't have is sauces to put with 
with the rice. So Mal has said, if you can see, like, you know, the Dolmio sauces, um, Canton, I think, is the other one. Any sauce, a simmer sauce, that somebody can just put through rice and meat, that would be really helpful to them. So when you do your shopping this week, if you want to pick up a jar or two of that and bring it along for them, that would be a huge blessing. As I said, they got rice coming out their ears, but nothing to go with the rice. So simmer sauces is what they've requested. I think you can also get them um, in sachets if you want to. However you get it, they will be extremely grateful and extremely thankful. So that's next week, as well as our missions offering will also be collected next week. Now, I have to tell you a massive praise report. I know Maravik's going to love this, and Chris, who's in Kids Church. We have been praying for months now now that our monthly missions collection would cover our monthly missions allocations. So each month our church gives in excess of $500 to missionaries around the place and previous to that, that was just coming out of general tithes and offerings but we really felt we wanted the church to get a picture of who our missionaries were, who we were supporting, and to actually sow directly into that. So we are so happy to say our last missions offering was one and a half times what we needed for our missionaries. So thank you, church, for taking up the call of generosity. The more you give, the more we can bless people. It's definitely a praise report. And next Sunday, our missions report is coming from Voice of the Martyrs. So we'll be hearing more about what's happening around the world with Voice of the Martyrs. I'm sure if you've turned on the news lately, you would know there's some big world events happening at the moment. So it's going to be great to hear from Voice of the Martyrs what they're doing and what they're up to. So that's next Sunday for Mission Sunday. And also, if there's any time left, we'll let Pastor Kevin preach. How does that sound, Pastor Kevin? No, we'll give you some time to preach. So next Sunday is Missions Offering. Is there anything else? I hear some ways to give. That would be wonderful. So we do have our AGM next Sunday and we will be sharing with the broader church, uh, sorry, with our church members, how the church is going at the AGM. If you would like a copy of the financial report, please ask any board member, but maybe it's just best to ask Maravik because you got it on email. That might be the best one. What I, does everyone know who Maravik is? Maravik in her non-church life is actually a chartered accountant. So she's kind of like up here when it comes to numbers. And she was showing us the finance report the other night. And I'm, with all due respect to accountants, I nearly had a headache. My, I, my, the numbers were spinning on the page. And I'm thinking, how on earth do people know what these things are? But you have a beautiful gift to actually break it down for people like me that kind of go, just tell me the end result. Just tell me the bottom line. Um, so we're going to share all that with the church next week. We're really excited uh, to share with you a few things happening in the life of the church. So the AGM is straight after the service. So once you've heard a great sermon from Pastor Kevin, we'll go and get a coffee and we'll come back in for that as well. So that's next Sunday. Um, these are the ways that you can give. We have noticed another praise report. We have noticed that more people are now giving online and people who are giving from our online church, which is a huge blessing. So thank you. We know you don't join us face to face, but obviously you call our church home. So thank you for sowing into here as well. It is a blessing. I just think when we get to give into the kingdom of God, what a joy it is to know that we are counted in salvations. When you know that, you I mean, I gave towards that project. I gave towards that ministry. I gave towards that preacher, whatever it was. It's a real joy. So Sean's getting ready to take up the offering for us now. And I promise, Mary, I promise, Reynard, I'll let you do communion any second now. Uh, but if you do want to give um, cash or check this morning, Sean will take it up. But let's take a word of prayer and I'll take a deep breath. <laughs> Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for an opportunity to once again sow from the increase that you've given us to have each in our families. God, I thank you for the ability to work. I thank you for the, in, the ability to invest, the ability to create funds, however that is. We do that and we thank you, Jesus, that all of that comes from you. And so, God, this morning we give of what you have blessed us with back into this storehouse, back into your local church so that we can go beyond, Lord. We can give to missionaries, we can give to our visiting speakers, Lord. We can give to food banks. We can give to soup kitchens, God, whatever it is, the need that comes. I thank you, Lord, that we are a generous church and that we can bless people in abundance. We give thanks this morning, God, I pray, as everyone gives with joy in their heart. Lord, that you would do as your word says and you would open the windows of heaven upon them. I pray you bless every person in Jesus' name. And everyone who agrees, said... 
Amen. God bless you, church. I just want to share one funny story, and then I promise. Rain, you come out the front here. So a couple of weeks ago, I wasn't able to go to Horsham to do my normal grocery shop, and I was talking to my mother-in-law about this, and it was a conversation I used to always have with Mari Les. We would talk about IGA, uh, where we live. I won't name the town. Uh, but it's very expensive. And so if you did your weekly shop there, you would, you know, it's expensive. It's a lot. And I said to Marlene, it's got to be done. I've got to go. But what I'm doing is I'm praying for specials. And she goes, oh, I'm looking forward to hear how it goes. So we used to talk about Mari with this all the time, Les. And she'd text me, say, Mince is on special. And so I'd go down. And anyway, I went down to IGA. And I'm, I'm not joking. My shopping list was on special. So Esther's nappies, nappies are expensive, were 40% off. So I'm just walking around getting all these things and thinking, did anybody else notice that everything I'm getting today is on special? And then, Reynard, I got a roast chook, a big roast chook that was $20 down to $12. I mean, that, you can't buy the materials for that. Right? Chooks are expensive. So it was a really great day. But what I wanted to encourage you in that is, is when we say God opens the windows of heaven over you, it doesn't always mean you get a check in the mail. I mean, that would be good. That would be good, wouldn't it, Reuben? You'd lo- I'd love a check in the mail. Who wouldn't love a check in the mail? But God looks after you in so many ways. And I ended up saying to Marlene, I spent the same amount at this expensive grocery shop that I would have spent if I went to Horsham. And honestly, I just thought, God knows. And to God be the glory. Because he's awesome, isn't he, Reynard? Now, as I promised, you can take him. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so before we get into the word, let us start with prayer. Father God, thank you for this opportunity to dive into your word. I pray that you will bring understanding and wisdom and that we can learn from you today. In Jesus' name, everyone who's ready for the word said, Amen. Amen. Good morning, church, and for those online, good morning. Um, so today's topic is about John fourteen six. Anyone know the verse by heart? All right, I'll I'll read it. (laughs) So Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man will come to the Father except through me. So Jesus is the only way. 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. John 10, 9, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Acts 4, 12, and there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. So we know Jesus is the only way to heaven and to God, but Jesus is the truth as well. 1 John 5.20 And we know that the Son of God has come and He has given us an understanding that we may know Him who is true and we are in Him who is true in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. John 1.17 For the law was given through Moses, but the grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. So we know that Jesus is the way, he is the truth. He is also the life. 1 John 5, 11 to 12. And this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in his son. Whoever has the son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. John 11, 25 to 26. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. We serve the one true God. And the bridge between him and humanity isn't through Muhammad, it isn't through Buddha, it isn't through any man. It is through Jesus who is fully man and fully God. He is the one and only way to the Father. Jesus is truth. He 
He speaks truth and lives in truth. He is life. Through him, we have eternal life with the Creator. That is because of the work done on the cross. Jesus died so that we can live. He died so that we can have salvation in him. He took, took on the punishment of sin, the punishment we were supposed to receive. Romans 6.23 For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. But the good news is, three days after he died, he rose from the grave and he lives on, sitting on the right hand of the Father. And this is what communion is all about. We remember the brutality Jesus faced. His body was broken for all of our sins. His blood was shed for us to establish a new covenant between man and God. Finally got there. (laughs) So this wafer, as we know, represents Jesus' body. And the juice represents his blood. Let us take and eat. Thank you, Jesus, for everything you have done. Thank you, Reynard. Um, do you know what? Maybe I will use Pastor Kevin's pulpit, but he's not even here to hear my jokes. Oh, that's all right. Um, actually, no, I'm going to give his a go. This is a bit different, isn't it? But if my iPad falls off, I'm going to sue the church. No, I'm just kidding. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> so, I actually, that was a really good word. Thank you, Reynard. Um, just a quick announcement to anybody. Does anybody here have any baby or children's Panadol on you by any chance? All good. Um, You can ask her if you want, Kat. I don't know. Somebody might be able to help out, Megan. Okay. So what I forgot to do in the announcements was actually to talk about, uh, we got an email this week from Pastor Wayne Alcorn, who is the chairman of ACC in Australia, all to do with the conflict that's happening in Israel at the moment. Uh, I might just read it out to you. It's definitely better than what I could say, but I'm just going to add a bit of height to this. I reckon it was set up for you last week. (laughs) It's very good. Okay, this is from Pastor Wayne. He says, Dear ACC family, there has been much prayer for the Middle East since we heard the news of the horrific terrorist attack on Saturday the 6th of October that ignited the conflict between Israel and Gaza. It is heartbreaking and a desperate situation for everyone who lives in that region. The death toll has escalated into the thousands with grave concerns for the plight of hostages taken and the thousands of people displaced as they evacuate and flee their homes. The tragedy of war is that it comes with a massive human toll as innocent people suffer. It is expected that the humanitarian needs will increase significantly as the conflict worsens. (coughs) Our response is to do whatever we can to help those in the midst of this war. Today, ACCI, which is Australian Christian Church's international, our missions arm, has launched our Middle East Appeal. All donations will go towards the work of our trusted mission partners on the ground to provide emergency aid and supplies when needed most. So we will forward this email out to you as a church, and if you wish to give... um, You can give it directly to them. We'll put all the details on the email for you as well. Um, But one thing we do want to do is to pray. Uh, We need to pray for all those who are impacted by this devastating conflict. Obviously, we need to pray for the peace of God in this region. So I wonder if this morning, if you could join with me um, in prayer. I often, I say this, and I've said this at the prayer meeting before, I often don't know how to pray in times like this. I often think, Lord, I just... I wish I had the right words. I wish I had the answers to prayer. But one thing we can pray, obviously, is for peace. 
to come. Why don't we also pray uh, for those who have been taken hostage. Let's pray, pray for the many people who have been injured as well. I saw this morning, I don't think there's, apart from Albert, there's no other kids here. I did see um, from a trusted media source, which I might talk about this morning as well, um, it was just a communication of a little boy at a funeral um, for his mum and dad and brother and sister who had all been killed. At the time, he was out going for his daily run and when he came home, that's what he found in his home. And these are the real life stories that are coming out that we don't see in mainstream media. We don't see it over here. And so we often don't realise, I suppose, the absolute gravity of these situations that people are facing. So I wonder if we can pray this morning and um, maybe you don't have the words to pray either, but let's just join in a prayer together of saying, Jesus, over here in Australia, where we really don't have anything to complain about, we just want to pray for our friends overseas. So Father, we just come before you this morning. Lord God, we thank you that you are a God of peace. And Lord, we just want to come and say, Father, that peace would be in these nations. God, we pray for the nation of Israel, that there would be peace in that nation. God, we pray for Palestine, that there would be peace in that nation. And God, we pray for the people stuck in the middle in Gaza, that God, there would be peace in that place as well. Father, we don't know, we don't have any idea what it's like to live day to day through the horror that they live through to live thinking that maybe one second everything's fine and the next minute the siren goes off and you're running for your life. Lord, we don't know what that experience is like. But Lord, we just pray this morning from the depths of our hearts for peace in these nations. God, we pray that world leaders would come together. Lord, as we condemn terrorist attacks, Lord, that we would see peace in these places. Father, we pray for every man, woman and child who is injured as a result of this conflict on all sides, in all places, in wherever they might find themselves, God. Lord, we pray that they would be safe, that they would receive medical attention, first aid, whatever it is, that they could recover from these injuries, Lord. We think of those who've lost family members. Lord, we just know that they need peace from you, God. They need that peace that passes all understanding because nothing about this situation makes sense. Nothing about this, Lord, is easy for us to reconcile. But we pray, Lord, if you put, us, if you put it on our heart to give financially, Lord, that we would be obedient to that. We pray for the aid organisations who are on the ground giving out this aid. Lord, we pray that they would be a real blessing just a real blessing, Lord, that people would see them and say, wow, there is hope in the world. And Lord, we just pray for an end to this conflict, an end to this conflict, Jesus. No more lives lost, no more innocent bloodshed. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you love Israel. And we know that you love Palestine. You love all people. In fact, Jesus, your word said that you went to the cross for all of us. That you so love the world that you gave your only begotten son that whoever in any nation that believes in you would not perish but have eternal life. Father, we pray through these devastating events that many, many people would find you, Jesus, on their knees, Father, repentant, turning their lives around. We give you thanks this morning, Jesus. We honour you in this place. And everyone who agrees said, Amen. Amen. Bless you, church. Don't know if you've seen Pastor Kevin, but I'm using your holy pulpit here. Just, just borrowing it. I'll give you a rating after the service. But uh, my message this morning, if you're a note taker, and it's not going to go for too long either, so it's all good. You can relax. But my message this morning is entitled, A Case for the News and Media. Oh, you already knew that because you got the church text yesterday. Some of you have already determined in your mind, though. You've already thought, yes, this is going to be a really good message because you wake up in the morning and you scroll your phone and you get the news and then you turn the telly on and you get the news and then you walk out to your driveway and you get the newspaper and you read the news and you're driving to work and you've got on 3AW. There's news, 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 news. You get home and Sky News is on. It's like your perfect day. Some people live for the news. And so you're thinking, this is going to be a great message today. As others, already you disagree because you think that the media is the devil's tongue. Nothing good comes from the media. We shouldn't be listening to the media. We shouldn't be reading that rubbish. We should be spending all our time in the word of God. And there's others, if we're honest, most of us, we're somewhere in between. 
What is, as a Christian, the right response to media? What is the right response to the news? I want to give you a case today for the news from a Christian perspective. So I might not be right, just giving you a little case. You know, when I was at school, you may have already picked up on this, I liked talking. And my English teacher thought, let's put this talent to good use and put her on the school debate team. I feel like that's a good use for her. And I loved it. In fact, it was probably that debate team, the reason behind that, or the reason that I went to uni and studied law was because of that debate team. I had a field day debating other people. I love getting up there. I loved having a go at the other team. And oh, we used to win all our debates. It was amazing. And so what I want to give you today is just my side on a case for the news today from a Christian perspective. Now, whether you've already got ideas about this or not, can you agree to having an open mind while you hear my case today? And everybody said? Yes, I can't wait to hear what you've got to say. Okay, this is good. Well, let's pray first, hey? Heavenly Father, it is a privilege to be before your church today. God, I pray as I share this word today, it would be from heaven, not from me. God, it would pierce our very hearts as we listen to words that come from you. Father, I pray as believers, we would take this word in today. We would work it through in our life. And certainly as a result of that, we would be a better version of ourselves for hearing your word today. We give you thanks this morning. And everyone who's ready for the word said... Amen. All right. Well, keeping up with the news can often be a very frustrating and depressing endeavor. Who would agree? Sometimes I turn it on and think, who writes the news? Who sits down and thinks for half an hour, I'm just going to tell all the people who are watching this every bad possible thing in the world and Australia with a smile on my face, finishing it with the sports report that I don't know if many people, okay, some people probably care about that, and the weather, and then we switch off. I think, is that actually what the news is? It's just all the bad stuff that seems to happen around us. It can often be quite depressing. As Christians, we know the scriptures tell us in 1 John 2, 17, that the world is passing away. The scriptures tell us that. It also tells us in 2 Peter 3, verses 10, that one day it will be destroyed. Kind of sounds like we're heading towards that. Yet our citizenship as believers is in heaven, Philippians tells us. So is there any good reason then for a Christian to pay attention to the news media? Yes. I really, truly, at the bottom of my being, believe there is. And that comes with a caveat, and we'll share more about that later. Because current events can provide timely lessons, whether that's for you, for your family, somebody you're sharing with, maybe you're a teacher and it's good for you to share with. But Jesus did similar things in Luke when he referenced things that were happening around him. The scriptures tell us in Luke 13 verses 3 and 5 that Jesus taught about a specific situation. He used that situation to teach the people listening about repentance. So he was using a current event, a story that was relevant to everybody, to teach about repentance. Current events can be a helpful segue. Have you ever been talking to somebody about current events in the world, something that's happening, and and actually found yourself referencing back to the fact that you're a Christian and praise God, you can pray through these things, or you've got someone else that you can talk to, or you have a hope in Christ that you can share with people? I find during times like this where there's increasing unrest around the world, where it's a pretty crazy place to be, people are very open to the gospel, very open to hearing how do you get through your day? How do you manage to take on everything that life throws at you? How do you manage to keep such a positive disposition and you can actually say, my hope is in Jesus, not this world. The world around us is lost and broken. The Bible tells us that it's falling away, it's passing away, and one day it'll be destroyed. But my hope is in Jesus. And there's something about that that people say, well, tell me more. Or maybe I learned about that when I was a kid. Maybe you were around during the days of RE at school, and and that was always good. But maybe it's, it's a time for that person to actually put some of those things into practice, some of the scriptures that we learn that we can put into practice. You know, I would say to us this morning that keeping up with current events can also help us to be prepared for changing seasons around us. 
When Jesus sent out his disciples on a limited commission, he said to them, Behold, you know the verse, I send you out as a sheep in the midst of wolves. So be shrewd as servants and as innocent as doves. That's in Matthew 10, verse 16. So even Jesus said, I'm sending you out and it's not going to be a walk in the park. You're going to see stuff. You're going to hear stuff. You're going to experience stuff. And I want you to think about this before you go. You're going to be sheep in the midst of wolves. So be, another version said, as wise as servants and as gentle as doves. You know, I've met some Christians who are not gentle doves. And, and they do us a bit of a disservice, if I'm being honest. And maybe I'll address some of that later today. These are the ones who are maybe so super spiritual. <laughs> They're of no earthly good. And I think to myself, Lord, come on, we've got to do better than this. We've got to be as wise as serpents and as gentle as doves. They needed to be prepared for what they were going to face. They would face opposition. This is us too, church. We will face opposition. We will face persecution and we will stand before civil leaders to defend our teachings. The Bible tells us this. Matthew 10, 17 to 18 goes through what Jesus said to them. But also when our brethren or their brethren in Antioch heard from the prophet Agabus, that's a cool word, Agabus, that a famine was coming, they determined in their hearts to send relief to their brethren in Judea that would be affected. That's in Acts. The warning that they had allowed for them to prepare to give to the coming situation, to be ready for the current situation. Of course, we don't have those kind of prophets these days. There's no one around here that heralds a bell down the street, come on down, I'm going to give you a prophetic word, I'm going to tell you what's happening in the regions. It's not like we have Jesus himself here to warn us either. Jesus used to walk among the people. I don't know if you can actually comprehend what that was like, being around when Jesus was walking among the people. We don't have that, but we have the Holy Spirit. We can look at things that are happening around us and to be as shrewd as servants, as the Bible says, and prepare for what might lay ahead. How are you preparing your family? How are you preparing your finances? How are you preparing for what's ahead? This principle of preparedness is seen throughout the Bible. Jesus used it to emphasize the point about being prepared for his coming. He wanted to prepare us for that. It says, but be sure of this, that if the head of the house had known what time the thief was coming, he would have been alert and would not allowed him in. <laughs> that's, that's a bit of wisdom, isn't it? I imagine if you knew there was a robber coming to your house, you'd make sure you were there. You'd probably get all your friends. Come around and say, not today, buddy. But if you don't know they're coming and you don't have an alarm system and you don't have gates and you don't lock your door and you leave your keys in your car and you do all of those foolish things, when those things happen to you, as the Bible tells us, you've got to be prepared. Matthew 24, 43 is that verse about the thief coming. If we pay attention to our surroundings and what may be coming, we can prepare. And that's why it's good with us, good for us as Christians to keep up with current world events, to know what's happening, to know what's happening in our community, to know what's happening on the greater global stage. You know, I think it's a real sad story when I hear of pastors, and I pick on pastors this morning, not you, Pastor Kevin, you would never do this, but pastors who, for example, might go and get a haircut. And the hairdresser, as they do, they know all the town goss and what's happening in the world. Not picking on hairdressers either. I love them this morning. But I have seen pastors be asked questions about something that's happening in the community or the world and say, don't know. First I've heard of it. And to me, it makes Christians look so irrelevant. That we have no idea what's happening in the community around us. In fact, it actually looks like we're a bit arrogant at times. And we're like, oh, we know what's happening in our church. Oh, wouldn't know what's happening down the street. Haven't even read the paper lately. Haven't even bothered to talk to my neighbours. And the point that I'm making this morning is sometimes as Christians, we can think too deeply about things. And sometimes we just need to be normal. Like I was talking to a Christian 
And I said, oh, I'm really looking forward to the AFL grand final this afternoon. You know, the boys have been looking forward to it, got some party food. You know what she said? AFL what? And I said, oh, my gosh, you live in Victoria. If you didn't know the AFL grand final was on today, I, I got serious concerns for you as a human being. Like, you're even on Facebook. It's kind of all over Facebook. And she goes, oh, haven't got time for that. Should be in church. And these are the comments that I hear from Christians and I think, God, help us as Christians to be more relevant to our community. So that when we're in the, the pickup there at school talking to other moms, we don't just look arrogant because we know nothing about our communities. You know, it's really, I think it's really awesome to see Christians attending, in country towns anyway, the local show. Get out there, see people, walk around, have a chat, get an ice cream, all the things you do, spend way too much money on show bags. But it's good because your community sees you and they think, oh, wow, it's cool, they're here as well. Well, their kids are normal because they entered stuff in the show. We, we actually, as Christians, I think, really need to become more relevant in our communities and not so aloof that we're of no good to our communities. But I digress. Back to my actual message today. The word teaches us that current events can help us to do this. That my next point is, though, we do need to keep things in perspective. We actually do. While paying attention to current events is important, we should not become so wrapped up in them that we neglect our responsibilities. The wise man said in Proverbs 22, the sluggard says, there is a lion outside, and if I go outside, I will be killed. So he didn't go outside. He stayed inside. It's in Proverbs. The sluggard uses his knowledge of the circumstances as an excuse to do nothing. We should use all our knowledge of the circumstances around us to be ready, to prepare, and then deal with the obstacles as they come our way. A sluggard is such a funny word, I think. Paul says in Philippians 4 verse 6, everyone knows this, be anxious for nothing. When was the last time you felt anxious though? Probably today, probably yesterday. The Bible says we must not worry over things that are out of our control. Instead, as we hear news about what is going on in our community, our country, or indeed around the world, we should use this information to prepare ourselves to prepare ourselves for the condition we might find ourselves in and in the future. It's important as we discuss these things with people that we listen to their point of view, listen to how people are feeling. You may not feel the same as them, but if you listen, you may really hear something new. You know, when the whole issue in Iraq, uh, sorry, <clears throat> Russia and... Ukraine, say, so like, who's Iraq? Russia, and you, that, was, that was tough for some people that we know personally in Donald who are Russian. And I remember seeing her at school drop off this one morning thinking, she is not herself. A, a very bubbly, generally bright, outgoing person. And then it only took me about three seconds to realise, oh, no, this is what's going on. And I messaged her and said, hey, how are you going? And she said, I'm not good. And she said, I didn't really have a right to drop my kids at school today. And you know, my heart broke for her because I thought, you have every right to drop your kids to school. You didn't do that. But because she's Russian, she felt the weight and she actually said, are people looking at me? And I'm thinking, nah, most people wouldn't have a clue. But that's how she felt. And she needed to be able to say, I didn't do anything wrong and I feel bad that this is my accent and I feel bad of what's happening. But do you know what she did? And this is the most beautiful example that I've ever seen. A family from the Ukraine, thank you, Rachel, she heard of this somehow, I don't know how she heard about it, came out to Australia and was settled in Birchip. And they had nothing, literally nothing. Like they, the clothes on their back, no suitcase. They had nothing. And when she heard about it, a Russian, she's Russian and they're from the Ukraine, she messaged all the mums in Donald and said, hey, can we not help this family? And you should have seen our mums group spring to life. Furniture came from all sorts of places. There was shoes, there was clothing, there was groceries. This family from the U Ukraine came out to a little house in Birchip in the middle of literally nowhere. 
and it was stocked up for them because a woman who identified as Russian felt in her heart, I've got to do something. I'm not over there, but I've got to do something. And what that spoke to everybody in our group was, man, she is fair income and she really loves people. And she has a, an interesting faith with God. She knows who God is, a slightly different understanding than perhaps I do. But she has this real understanding of there is a God and I can do something to help people around me. It's important as believers that we listen to people around us. We listen to how, they're, they're how they feel. We listen to the news, what's happening in our community and what's around us, and we be prepared. As we discuss these things with others, we might actually find that we have an opportunity to witness to them. You may actually have an opportunity to pray with them, to share with them. And I just think that is it's the best, just to be able to say, you know what, I'm here, I just want to help you, I want to be here for you, I want to provide your physical needs, I just want to do whatever I can to help you. And then, and then when they say, why would you do that for me? Oh, you know what, I'm a believer and this is what I think we should be doing. It just speaks volumes to people. I wonder how you're feeling this morning when you watch the news. Do you feel hopeless? Do you feel lost? Sometimes I just think, if I turn it on, it's just going to upset me again. If I read the paper, it's just going to upset me again. There's so many things that are out there. But I believe as believers, it's all about a balance. So not to keep our head in the news 24-7, because honestly, I think that would make you riddled with fear and anxiety would just bubble up all the way through you. The same is true, though. So my key takeaways for today, in case you, you were taking notes, my first one, obviously, is don't consume the news constantly and become riddled with fear and do nothing. The second one is don't be so aloof and so called holy that you're of no earthly good that you can't even relate to people. As believers, the word of God says us to be in the world, not of the world. It doesn't say, oh, by the way, when you're a Christian, you don't need to go out anymore. You just go to your church. You stay there. It's you four and no more. You don't need to be around other people. The Bible doesn't say that. It says to be in the world, but not of the world. How can you shine a light in the darkness if the light is over there and the darkness is over there? We can't be the city on a hill if we're actually covering up our light. It's all about balance this morning, church. And my third point would be find the balance. How much of the word of God do you read versus how much of the news media do you consume? There's a balance. And I don't know what your balance is, and you probably don't know what my balance is, but what our balance is is actually saying, God, can you help me with that? Can you help me, God? Can you help me work out what is a, a healthy balance for me? And for me, I know watching the news before bed is a major no-no because -no. obviously whatever my mind takes in before I go to bed is part of the tape that plays in my head overnight. So that's not a good time for me to do that. In fact, the best time for me to read the Word of God is before I go to bed because I take it in and then something in my head, I don't know what it is, maybe you are like this, maybe you are different, it just goes to my head all night and then I wake up the next day thinking, Man, I really loved that scripture last night. And then I start the day in the Word because I don't want to be anxious about anything. So I want to start in the Word of God and ground myself in the Word of God. And then when I'm feeling up to it with a strong enough coffee, then I might turn the news on and say, all right, Lord, what's happening in the world today? And how can I pray? You might be different to me. You might be able to watch it at night. But we're all different. But it's about coming before God and saying, God, am I a little bit out of balance here? Do I need some help here? And, you know, a great example for you, and I sh shared this with Tracy Bennett last night, is one of our children, I won't tell you which one, had a bit of a rough day yesterday. And as I was walking, I walked away and then came back down the hallway with something for said child who was praying out loud, and this was their prayer. Dear Jesus, I'd really like a lovely day tomorrow. Just wondering if you could help me with my behaviour. Thanks, Jesus. Amen. Out loud, I could hear it. And I was telling Tracy, and I said, oh, Tracy, 
you know, if you don't laugh, you cry, or if you cry, you laugh. It's all the same thing. Parenting's like a walk in the park, but it's Jurassic Park. That's what they say. <laughs> and Tracy said, do you know what? That is a prayer we should all be praying. Jesus, help me with my behavior. Help me with my thinking. Help me with what I speak. Help me with my actions. Help me with what I do. And I learned a lesson from one of the younger people in our house that sometimes the most simple prayer is the most effective. Didn't need to rabbit on for 10 minutes, but just needed to say, I'd like a lovely day tomorrow. Would you help me with my behaviour? And I think as Christians, we can learn a lot from whichever one of my children that was. You can probably guess. But hey, why don't we close in prayer this morning? Heavenly Father, we thank you for our church. We thank you that here at Wheatland District Church, we have an incredible amount of people who call this place home and many who are away today. And Lord, we pray a blessing on them. Lord, if they would be traveling, that they would have a great time if they're unwell. Lord, we certainly pray for healing in their body or for whatever reason they're not here today. We pray a blessing on them, Jesus. We pray for everybody this morning who's heard this message, that God, somehow in our hearts, you would have touched us. To, to ask that very important question, what, what is the balance for me? That the news and the media, although sometimes, can be the devil's mouthpiece, we need to actually be listening to what's happening in the world around us. We need to have an idea of what's happening in the world around us. Even as Jesus himself used examples of current world events to share with his disciples, we too can use current world events when we're making examples about things or using it as a reference. God, I pray as believers that we would not be so aloof that we're of no earthly good, but God, we would be relevant in our community. God, we would be in our communities, yes, not of our communities or not of the world, but in them, God, loving our communities, getting to know our communities, hearing the needs of our communities, hearing the heart of our communities, being the light to our community. Father, I thank you that your word says to us, you know, a city on a hill cannot be hidden. So don't hide your light under a bushel. Let it shine. And Father, I pray we as a church would be a church that's known for the light that shines out from this place. God, we pray a special blessing on every person who's here this morning. God, as we go into our week, we pray that each of us would be as wise as servants, but as gentle as doves with what we consume, how we live our life, how we interact with people, how we go about our day to day. Let us be as gentle as doves, Father, communicating that beautiful joy and peace and love that comes only from heaven. God, we give you all the praise this morning. We give you all the glory this morning. You alone are worthy. And Father, we just want to lift you high this morning. And everyone who agrees said, amen. amen. God bless you, church. I pray you go out and enjoy a lovely tea or coffee or chai or hot chocolate or whatever it is that people drink these days. Uh, but who knows that God is good? All the time. I always rely on you, Wally. And all the time. God is good. Amen. God bless you, church. I pray you'll consider joining us for the prayer meeting tomorrow night. Otherwise, we'll